it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Proudly sponsored by Farming Unit Nice Coffee. Hi guys, um, welcome to this uh, next video. This one's going to be all about um, errors in chemistry, in particular when we're talking about titrations, uh, but these can be applied um, to some of the other topics we're going to be looking at as well. Uh, so when we're doing um, some stuff in using control and reactions about um, thermodynamic equations and reactions and everything like that, um, the errors can be applied to that as well. Alright, so first thing I'm going to start off and just explain about the difference between the two types of errors we normally get. So first one are what we call random errors, okay? So random errors um, are a, uh, a once-off, okay? And normally they're the result of human error, okay? So if it only is going to affect you once in the titration or in three calculations, all right, it's going to be a random error. It's normally as a result of um, something that you've just sli um, done slightly incorrectly. Systematic errors um, will affect every calculation, all right? everyone, every calculation, and then normally as a result of glassware or apparatus that you use, okay? So um, quite often uh, your beer, your pipette, um, things like that will be a source of systematic error, and I'll talk a little bit about that as well, all right? So I'm just going to um, start off by looking at some of the different things that we can do in titrations and how we can get some errors through this. Um, so first of all, when talking about rinsing the burette, Obviously what we know is we um, fill it with firstly some uh, distilled water, okay, and then we rinse it with the solution that we're going to be using beforehand, okay. If, um, if we don't rinse it with distilled water, uh, what that means is we can have contaminants in there from previous experiment experiments. Now, those contaminants could react with what you've got um, inside the burette, and that's going to result in a lower concentration of the sample that you've got inside your burette okay now a lower concentration of your sample means that you're going to need um, more in your titration so it's going to lead to a higher tighter value okay conversely if you don't actually um, uh, then rinse it with the solution that you're going to be using Okay, so if you rinse with distilled water, but then don't rinse it with the solution you're going to be using, you're going to have the same sort of effect. You're going to have a lower concentration, which is then going to, therefore going to result in a higher tighter value. Now, overall, what that's going to do is that's probably going to affect your actual calculation of your final concentration. Okay, so um, if you're trying to calculate a concentration of something that is in your conical flask and your tighter value is higher, that's actually going to result in a higher concentration of what you're calculating than what it actually is okay so this can have quite um, an impact upon your calculations at the end um, below the tap when you're rinsing the burette if you don't fill below the tap okay uh, this section over here in the burette that is included in your tighter value so when you're actually um, calculating your tighter value um, from your initial and your final, this bit below the tap is actually included in that. So if you don't include that bit below the tap, what's going to happen is that your tighter value is actually going to appear lower than it actually is. Okay, so if your tighter value appears lower than it actually is, then what happens to your sample in the conical flask is your sample is going to appear to have a higher concentration. Okay, because it's going to appear that you didn't need as many moles to react with it, so it's actually going to have a higher concentration. Okay, so again, um, filling below the tap is quite important. Now, this um, and is an example of a random error. Okay, so this one's random. And the reason it's random is it's only going to happen on your very, very first titration. Okay, After you've done your, uh, your first titration, obviously it will be filled below the tap, and that's actually going to um, therefore not be an error in your following titrations. If you go back to this one before about rinsing the burette, okay, both of these are going to probably be examples of a systematic error. Okay, Because what you've done um, is you've... Um, yeah, well. It might be systematic depending on how many titrations you do. Okay, If it's a once-off titration, it's going to be systematic error. If it's one you're doing over and over again, after um, you've emptied the burette for the first time, you're going to be refilling it, and therefore it will become a random error and only affect your first calculations. So you need to think about if it's going to affect every calculation you're doing, in which case it's random. Otherwise, if it's only um, affecting one individual, one, it's, um, it's going to be 
So if it's going to only going to affect an individual one, it's going to be random. If it affects all of them, it's going to be systematic. All right. Here's another one. This is one of my pet hates. If you leave the funnel in the burette while you're titrating, okay. So what will actually happen up here if we've got your your burette like this, or uh, so your funnel like this? If you've got your little drops of solution that's in here, and this is your burette, what could happen during your titration is you'll get an actual drop of your sample here, which is going to go into um, your burette, and what's going to happen? As you're reading your meniscus, okay, that drops comes in, and it's actually going to raise the meniscus level slightly. Okay, now what that's going to do is that's actually going to change your final reading. It's going to make the tighter value appear lower than it actually was because you've you've added some into it, and your tighter value is actually going to be up and higher than um, it actually should be. So it's going to make your tighter appear lower. This is going to actually have an effect on the final concentration. If your titer appears low, it's going to appear that your concentration at the end for your calculating is actually higher than what it actually is. Okay, this is an example of a random error. Okay, uh, because it's probably only going to happen off a once off, and it might not happen the same amount of drips every time, even if you leave it in every time anyway. So it's just going to be something that affects it and is going to slightly um, affect your calculations. Okay. Next one we're looking at is reading the meniscus level for a coloured solution. So when you're doing some titrations that involve permanganate, for example, um, it's very, very difficult to actually read the meniscus effectively. Okay, um, so this the, the key to this one is about being consistent. Okay, if you are consistent in this and you always read at the same level, you're going to minimise your error. Okay, um, so that's really important. However, Every time you read it, it might be slightly different all right, in terms of where you're reading it because of the difficulty of actually seeing the bottom of the meniscus. So this is going to be a random error as well. That's going to affect how you read it. Okay, But if you're consistent with um, the, if sometimes reading at the top of the level rather than at the bottom of the meniscus, that can help minimize your random errors for this one. All right. Another one is something called parallax error or not reading the meniscus at eye level. All right. And this can sometimes um, come about just through um, you know, sometimes even the bending of light, how it makes the bottom of the meniscus here appear. Okay, so I'll flip to one So you can see that bottom of the meniscus sometimes um, there's a bit of reflection and everything that's occurring as well. So um, this can actually be an example of a systematic error, okay, because it's going to affect your reading of the meniscus every time. Okay, so um, it's not necessarily going to um, change your overall um, calculations that you're doing, uh, but systematic errors actually will affect your accuracy. And I haven't spoken about this before. All right, but accuracy is how close you are to the actual value. Okay, so um, if you've got some parallel parallax errors. Um, it could affect um, your meniscus readings. However, if you think about it, this is going to be affecting it when you read it at the beginning and at the end, so it's probably going to cancel itself out. But it's more example of a systematic error which can sometimes affect your accuracy. Okay. Next one is not rinsing the pipette correctly. All right. This, similar to not rinsing the burette correctly, is going to be a random error. Okay. Now, random errors actually affect your precision. Okay, and when we're talking about titrations, we're talking about concordant titers. Okay, so if you don't rinse the pipette either with distilled water or the solution you're going to be using, what you're going to end up with is probably a dilution of your original sample that you've got in there. Okay, that's going to, um, if, if you dilute it, in this case, if you're diluting it through the pipette, you're going to have a lower tighter value because you're not going to need as much as you um, originally needed. Okay, and so you're probably going to work out that you have a lower concentration in this case. Okay, because you won't have as many number of moles. Okay, so we've actually got less number of moles in the pipette because you've diluted it and so that's going to result in a lower concentration at the end. Um, that's only going to happen in your first one, all right? Um, in your second one, because it's now been rinsed with the solution that you're using, the number of moles will actually be higher and so you're probably not going to get a concordant titer and so that's um, affecting your precision. All right. in, sometimes you can get a bubble in the pipette or the burette end, all right? Now what that actually does is that um, can sometimes um, change your t 
type of value, okay? Um, so if, if we're talking about with the pipette firstly, okay, um, if you've got a bubble in there, that actually means you've got less than your 20 mils of your solution in there. If you've got less than your 20 mils in there, what's going to happen is you're going to have a lower tighter value, all right? And the reason for that is because you've got less number of moles, okay? Um, so that's going to therefore affect your final concentration and make that lower. If it's in your burette, what could happen is that um, partway through your titration, the air bubble will actually come out, so it will travel down the burette and it will come out. What that's going to do is it's going to drop your um, tight, your meniscus level significantly in one go, and it's going to make your titer appear higher than it actually is, and that's going to end up giving you a higher concentration of your sample that you're trying to calculate in the um, conical flask. So all of these can have an effect. These are both examples of random errors, okay? Because it's, and you're not going to have the same size bubble every time, or you're not going to have necessarily a bubble in there every time. So it's just going to affect that individual calculation, which again is going to affect your precision. Okay, this one, overshooting the endpoint of the titration. And hopefully you can see from the color we've got over here. Okay, that is um, probably a little bit darker pink than what we'd actually like. So always in your titrations, you want to aim for the first permanent color change. Okay, normally you want to go to a pale pink. This one's a little bit further than that. So if you've um, gone a little bit further in your color change, what that means um, is that you've actually added more from your burette. Okay, so that's going to make your tighter appear higher. Okay, so what that's going to do is that's going to make your concentration of the sample inside your conical flask appear higher as well, because it means it's in a sense it's um saying that you've had more number of moles added to be able to um, react to get to your endpoint, so it's going to make your concentration values appear higher as well. This is going to be another example of a random error, okay, because um, hopefully you're going to be consistent, and uh, overshooting the endpoint is just going to affect your ability to get your concordant titers, all right, which is your precision. Your volumetric flask. Uh, there's a couple of things with your volumetric flask that can go wrong. Uh, the first one is when you transfer uh, your solid in to make up your volumetric flask, okay. If you don't transfer in all of your solid, what you're going to end up with is a lower concentration okay, than you actually calculated. So this is going to be an example of a systematic error because if your concentration is lower, every single titration that you do, taking some sample out of your volumetric flask is going to make it appear lower all right, in concentration. Same thing is if you don't rinse with distilled water, if you don't rinse it, okay, again, you're going to end up with a lower concentration because it's quite possible some of it will react. Okay, and um, so again, that's going to affect every single calculation that you do. Okay, the other one you can do is having it um, not homogeneous. Okay, so if you don't make it homogeneous, and what that means is making it all one layer. So if you've still got some solid over here, if we still had some solid down the bottom here, which wasn't dissolved, okay, again, that's going to make your concentration appear lower, right, which again is going to affect every single calculation you do. So all of the um, ones for our volumetric flask here are actually systematic errors, because that's what you use in every titration. It's going to affect all of them. Okay. Final thing I'll talk about um, is mistakes. Um, sometimes people get confused and call things random errors or systematic errors when they're actually mistakes. So I'll just give you an example of three common mistakes that people make. Okay, so um, let's say for example that in your burette you were supposed to use hydrochloric acid and instead of hydrochloric acid you've actually used sulfuric acid. Okay. Now that's your mistake that you've done, all right? You've just read it incorrectly, you've used the wrong thing. Um, this has obviously got twice as much H plus in it as hydrochloric acid does, so it's gonna significantly affect your titration. Um, you might get concordant titers, um, you know, you might actually work out pretty accurately the concentration and maybe the sulfuric acid that you're using, but it's a mistake. You haven't used what you're actually meant to be using. Uh, the next one involves uh, using the balance. Um, if your um, 
measuring out the mass of your um, solid for making your um, standard solution and you instead of reading it as 3.42 you read it as um, 3.52 or something like that for example okay you've misread it all right it's not actually an error with the apparatus that you're using um, it's just a mistake that you've made and it's not um, it's a mistake it's going to affect everything so that's actually um, given a, as a mistake all right um, last one another really good example is uh, like not adding indicator okay so no indicator in there um, no indicator is just another mistake you're not going to be able to get an endpoint okay um, or for example if you're doing a um, redox titration you don't add some of the acid in which is what you need for the redox reaction to occur okay um, then um, that's going to be a mistake so to summarize really quickly um, your random errors okay are generally due to human error okay all right. and they affect your precision all right so that means your ability to get concordant titers whereas your systematic errors okay they are generally due to your equipment they affect every calculation and they will affect your accuracy which is your ability to get close to the actual true value Okay, so hopefully this has been helpful. I encourage you to go back. I haven't covered absolutely everything that could um, go wrong, but I've just covered some of the common ones. Hopefully this helps you with your prac write-ups and understanding some of the issues you can have. Thanks, guys.